In this video, we're going to be discussing the Sharp Purser Test. So the Sharp Purser Test is one of two major tests that looks at the integrity of the transverse cervical ligament, sometimes it's called the transverse ligament. This is a ligament in the neck that helps to keep the atlas, so C1, in relative close proximity to C2 in the sagittal plane. And so if there's damage to the transverse cervical ligament, what tends to happen is there's excessive translation of C1 relative to C2. This becomes more apparent when the patient goes into cervical flexion. So we're jumping ahead a little bit because the starting patient position for the sharp purser test is about 30 degrees of cervical flexion like you see here. Now when the patient bends their neck forward like this, gravity tends to make C1 want to translate anteriorly relative to C2. And the further the patient goes into flexion, the more apparent this is. Now normally, the transverse cervical ligament keeps that anterior translation in check. It restricts it. But if there's damage to the transverse cervical ligament, you will probably have excessive anterior translation of C1 relative to C2. Now why is that a problem? Because when you have that excessive anterior translation of C1 relative to C2, that narrows the vertebral foramen at the atlantoaxial junction. And what structure traverses through that vertebral foramen? It's the spinal cord. And so if you're narrowing that space for the spinal cord, you're going to compress it. And that compression on the spinal cord can cause serious injury and death, especially because you're at a level of the spinal cord that's so high up between the levels of C1 and C2. And it turns out that this is the most common complication in individuals with rheumatoid arthritis. And there's other conditions where you might see this as well, including Marfan syndrome. To perform the sharp purser test, the patient's going to be positioned and seated, like you see here, in approximately 30 degrees of cervical flexion. Now, if the patient does have damage to the transverse cervical ligament, this position is probably going to be provoking to their symptoms, which we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. From here, the PT is going to stabilize at the C2 spinous process using a pincer grip. And the pincer grip, as you see right there, is formed between the thumb and the index finger. And so each finger goes on either side of the C2 spinous process. Now, when we say stabilize it, you're not going to be able to grab and hold onto the C2 spinous process, uh, but really just holding your fingers there to prevent excessive movement of it. You're just stabilizing it, okay? And with the other arm, the PT is going to wrap it around the patient's forehead, like you see here. And you're going to attempt to translate the skull posteriorly relative to C2, like you see that. So right there, translate it posteriorly. And I'm just doing this a few times. But in general, you only have to do it once or twice. So how does this work? Well, for somebody that has damage to the transverse cervical ligament, that position of cervical flexion is going to cause that excessive anterior translation of C1 relative to C2. So by moving the skull posteriorly, by virtue of its attachment on C1 through the occipital condyles, I'm also moving C1 posteriorly and essentially moving it back into the proper position, relieving potential compression on the spinal cord. So the sharp purser test is going to be, in some ways, an easing test because a positive test is a reduction in symptoms if present. So when I translate the skull posteriorly, I'm positioning that atlas back into its proper position, relieving compression on the spinal cord, and you should get reduction of symptoms if they're present from the start. And these symptoms could be any number of things, but most of them are going to be cranial nerve signs. For example, an abnormal pupil response, eye twitching or nystagmus a soft end feel. Remember, we're looking at integrity of the transverse cervical ligament. That should be associated with a firm end feel when you translate C1 posteriorly relative to C2. So if it's a soft end feel, that implies that there's damage to the transverse cervical ligament. There can also be muscle spasm, dizziness, nausea, paresthesias of the lip, the face, or the limb, or a lump sensation in the throat. In theory, the 30 degrees of cervical flexion would bring any of these symptoms on right here, but then translation of C1 relative to C2 posteriorly would then reduce those symptoms.
Additionally, you might hear an audible clunk, or the patient may report a click or a clunk felt in the roof of their mouth as you translate the occiput posteriorly. So, let's take one more look at the sharp purser test. The patient's going to be positioned and seated in approximately 30 degrees of cervical flexion. And another note here, you may have to get a little bit more cervical flexion in some cases to bring on the patient's symptoms, because remember, this is an easing test. Once they have symptoms, use a pincer grip to stabilize the C2 spinous process, and using your other arm, wrap that around the patient's forehead snugly, and then use that to translate the skull posteriorly. And again, because of the connection between the occiput and C1, you're actually translating the C1 vertebra posteriorly relative to C2. And when you translate the skull posteriorly, you may need to hold that position for a little longer than I'm showing in this video to allow the patient to feel if their symptoms are being relieved. Now the psychometrics of the sharp purser test depends on the degree of laxity at the atlantoaxial joint. So in the study that looked at the sensitivity and specificity values, the laxity was defined as either greater than 3 millimeters, greater than 4 millimeters, or greater than 5 millimeters. And these distances of laxity were determined via x-rays for the people involved in the study. So when the laxity is greater than 3 millimeters, and we could really say between 3 and 4 millimeters, the sensitivity is not so great, 69%, but the specificity is all the way up at 96%. So regardless of the degree of laxity, if somebody has a positive sharp purser test, there's at least a 96% chance that they have damage to the transverse cervical ligament. If the laxity is between 4 and 5 millimeters, the specificity didn't change, but the sensitivity increased to 0.88. And then finally, if the laxity was greater than 5 millimeters, the specificity is 100%. But any way you put it, this is a very specific test. The lowest specificity we have is 96%. Pretty darn good. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 